Hi again, guys. Hey, I haven't had uh, much time to really show you sort of the way that I've been scouting here in the game. And uh, as I've been um, moving uh, forward through the screens, I realized that um, I probably could show you a little bit of what's going on here. So let's go ahead and take a look really quick. Um, we don't have very many scouts here on the uh, squad because we're an amateur squad and we don't really have any money. And so as a result, we've got a chief scout and two other scouts. I guess I could probably ask for more if I really wanted to. Uh, actually, you know what? I can't. So it won't let me. Um, if I go over here and I look over at uh, the uh, recruitment team, yeah, we've got uh, one, two, three guys. None of these guys are going to show up with any attributes because of the way I've got this uh, turned on. Um, so, like, we could look at, say, Robert Sasala, and we can see that, oh, yes, he has unknown for some of these things. I mean, these guys are not going to be, like, world-class scouts, right? This is playing at the low level, at the amateur level in American Samoa. We're only looking at American Samoa. We do have... Um, this uh, scouting package, we don't have enough money for the one that's up above this one, unfortunately. So so it is. We're going to have to um, sort of make do with what we've got. Um, and um, there's no real way for me to – I can try to increase the scouting budget, but you see there's no money. So we're not going to be able to do very much more than that. Now, when we go here and look and see what we found, we found guys like this, uh, Ryan Vialli. And, uh, of course, we have gone through and fully scouted him. Um, we don't see any star ratings. We don't get any of that information, right? Which is what I want to, why I want to show this to you. We could pull this guy on if we wanted to. He's interested in being transferred on, but the reason why I won't is because he's not very consistent. That's the thing I'm really worried about. The rest of this stuff, he's slow. He has plenty of room to develop and stuff like that. We could work with that, but the inconsistency is really hard to work with and it drives you nuts. So we're going to head not interested. For the guy before, Chris Moy, he shows up here as uh, yellow because I went and uh, made him an offer and will be signing him. Again, Again, he is slow, has poor technique, which is probably every single defensive player um, in this league. But he's got good jumping reach. He's very, very tall. And uh, so, yeah, we might as well go ahead and grab this guy as a uh, uh, center back. Might as well because um, Twala Lele, after giving up two penalties in two matches and after giving up two goals by himself in the last match, um, is kind of on uh, my uh, dark list right now and is going to be sitting on the bench for a little while. Unfortunately, the transfer window is not going to be open for a while. This is only September uh, 2024. I have to wait till November for that to open up. When you look back here at some of the other guys that we had earlier on, I said no here to uh, Samaraki Latu because of the injury susceptibility. The rest of this stuff, low self-belief even, you know, we can still kind of work with it because we're at the ultra amateur level. But um, I've got to watch out for a guy who's injured right now and who has a, a potential problem with injuries. I don't know if we really want to go forward and sign him. Now, you might wonder, how do I find players to uh, look at? What do I do for recruitment focuses? So if you create a recruitment focus, I've noticed in Football Manager 23, it does really weird things, right? Like instead of being like really focused on what your recruitment focused was, the guys will uh, go out and get a list of maybe like 30 players and just like spam you with the same 30 players over and over again. And they'll keep, you know, looking at the same players over and over again. I mean, it's the stupid way of doing scouting Football Manager. So we don't screw around with that. Instead, what we do is I go around and I look for players who potentially are good, and I have the scouts look at them one at a time, and then I wait for them to finish. And so when we look overall, how many players do we have? We have 233, right? 233 players that we're looking at, as you can tell, they are not going through them in any order. Um, so uh, we just sort of sit back and wait, and we look at the ones who um, have good ratings, and uh, then we see what they come up with. Now, we're not quite done scouting all of these guys, but guys like uh, this guy, uh, Petuliki Malani, who's 18 years old over at Pago Youth, if he's actually interested in joining us, and it looks like he's not, but if he were interested, then I go ahead and sign him. He's not interested at the moment, so what we're going to do is we're going to put him on the uh, short list and wait for him to become interested and see if that happens. Mark Collins, another one. Oh, but look, he is uh, susceptible to injuries, and so we're probably not going to want to go after him, even though he has the uh, good review. Now, a thing to keep in mind is that on Football Manager 23, and I anticipate probably in every Football Manager game going forward, players who are seven or are 18 and below are probably not going to be likely to come to your team, even if you're in the same country, right? 18 is kind of like the barrier. Once you get on sort of like the right side of 18, to become a little bit more likely. But like this guy, Jaya Sasala, I know already there's just simply no interest that um, he's going to have in coming to our team. In fact, we don't really want this guy. I don't know why we're even looking at him. Then we can go over and cancel the assignment once we look through. Mark Collins, right, we know, again, we don't want him because of that um, injury susceptibility. So we can look early and say, okay, well, we have a reason not to want him. I'll just select him and cancel the assignment. There you go. 
Antonio Poli, another one, and uh, this is a guy who is unambitious, unfortunately, but most of our team is as well. Fairly consistent, and unless something really weird comes up, we'll want to go after him. But uh, the problem, of course, is that he actually earns money. We can't really have him because he is money earning. This is the guy we looked at a little bit before who was on Utile and who was the uh, top scorer last season in the league, and who went over to uh, ADT over in the Philippines. And so uh, we're probably not going to be able to get him, but we will keep him uh, on our short list for the time being. Here's another one, Walter Maile. Very consistent, lighthearted personality, center back with a top of team of youth. Uh, but um, unfortunately, uh, when we go here and look up here, he's also not very interested in a transfer. We can try to sign him. But, uh, oh, look at this. He's actually willing to talk with us. So maybe we will be able to uh, pull a little bit of a, uh, a surprise and uh, pull him on over. Right, and so you can do you can play this game with just about everybody, right? We have extensive knowledge on this guy. I mean, we could jump the gun a little bit and go ahead and sign, but uh, he's not uh, interested. He doesn't think our game is big enough, and so it is. It just sort of depends from player to player. But this is in general the way that we do this. We can do this as well for goalkeepers, right? Um, although we do want to wait a little bit longer. Again, I'm really worried about consistency, and in this case, he doesn't have any transfer interest yet. Um, it doesn't. I don't blame him because he's on a very good team and he's the starting goalkeeper on the best team in the league. And when it comes to this sort of thing, um, if they end up with like a D rating, um, but they don't have this inconsistency or whatever, I might sign them anyway because I don't have that much trust in my scouts. In this case, because we know that um, there is something that will make it so that I don't want to uh, sign him anyway, I'm just going to stop uh, scouting him. Pedro Puasa, on the other hand, is a player who has a D rating, but um, if he doesn't have one of those dislikes big matches or is inconsistent or whatever, we might go ahead and uh, sign him off of uh, Black Roses and just have him here on the uh, squad, even though you know he might not even be good enough to start. It's good to have more players than fewer. Um, and uh, we could always uh, take a player like that and loan him out. Junior uh, Tofaeono, um, unfortunately, is going to be another one that we're not going to go after again because of his inconsistency and because of the big injury problems. Big injury problems, there's not much you can do about that unless you figure out how to um, get rid of the underlying problem. But uh, the real problem that you have is not the injury problems. The real problem that you have is the uh, inconsistency. And Afa used to play for us. I don't know why we're scouting him. It's ridiculous. We're not going to scout Afa. What happened is, so when I was setting this up, I went over to players in range, and I looked up, I don't know, probably every position that we had, and uh, so this is set up to look for new gens. I probably, uh, new gens, I probably just looked up nationalities, American Samoa, and said, give me everybody who I don't know anything about, and uh, let me see how they are. Um, and, I mean, that's one way of doing it, but the problem is you might end up running into players that have already been through your system you don't like, or you'll wind up with guys like uh, Nikki Tofaiono, who uh, we are not going to sign no matter what, because um, he's not particularly good. This guy, Ione Assam, is a guy we've looked at before. I can tell because he uh, was listed as being on our short list. And um, unfortunately, it looks like he's probably not willing to come to our squad. Um, and when we try this, yeah, he doesn't think that it's a good move. Remember, again, that he's only 17 years old. So you can kind of see what the pattern is. You know, usually if they're 17 years old, they're not going to be so willing to come over. You can play this game for a long time. And um, it is kind of fun to take a break and to go through and to check out everybody. Just be careful. So when you run into a guy like this, Chris Tasse, and he's a goalkeeper and nothing's showing up, wait. You know, I know that uh, we have a little bit of information about him. So he's showing up a C plus. He's only 16. Wait a little while. It's okay. You don't have to have a team that's full of like the best, you know, young players possible. You can wait a little bit, even if you don't sign him right away, right? Especially if you're talking about amateur world, it's okay to wait. As you can see here, as I scroll through all of this, all the players who I put on here are guys who are like 16, 17, or 18 years old. Um, we probably should supplement this with um, a few more older players. Um, and uh, I mean, there's positive and negative aspects of uh, doing that, but that's what I'd recommend doing. And there you have it. That's the way that um, I will look into uh, trying to uh, uh, scout these players um, uh, when you're an amateur team with uh, really nothing else going for you. Um, you might as well give it a try. You know, it's not uh, the uh, it's not definitely not the easiest thing in the world to do, especially on amateur sides, because um, you're going to end up with a really poor scouting network um, and. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's not going to be as easy as if you were uh, Manchester City or Manchester United with all sorts of money and all sorts of uh, scouts running around the world doing crazy things. But still, you can get some pretty good deals once in a while, and maybe you can take a team that otherwise isn't that good and make them play pretty good. You just have to get them to win, and we're still having a hard time with that. But uh, we're working on it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.